rooted for the audio or you can even watch back Giving players all the props or put them on blast We don't give no hot takes, only talk facts We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line can hold it down shout out to my man sammy got it off the ground and to all the listeners tuned in right now got debates analysis and speculation this is sports talk for the new generation you know where to find us got a reputation sick podcast your number one sports destination giving all our devotion riding high on this wave of emotion going all out yeah because this is our time no, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. All in, we came in to win. We're gonna give everything. S-I-C-K on the run. S-I-C-K, sick, sick. On fire, we're ready to fight. We'll bring the house down tonight. S-I-C-K on the run. S-I-C-K, sick, sick. S-I-C-K is the sick. For the audio, or you can even watch back, giving players all the props, or put them on blast. We don't give no hot takes, only talk back. S I C K, S I C K, S I C K, S I C K, For the audio, or you can even watch back, giving players all the props, or put them on blast. We don't give no hot takes, only talk facts. We're giving all our devotion, riding high on this wave of emotion, going all out, yeah, cause this is our time. No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. can hold it down shout out to my man sammy got it off the ground and to all the listeners tuned in right now got debates analysis and speculation this is sports talk for the new generation you know where to find us got a reputation sick podcast your number one sports destination giving all our devotion riding high on this wave of emotion going all out yeah because this is our time no, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. All in, we came in to win. We're gonna give everything. S-I-C-K on the run. S-I-C-K, sick, sick. On fire, we're ready to fight. We'll bring the house down tonight. S-I-C-K on the run. S-I-C-K, sick, sick. S-I-C-K is the sick. For the audio, or you can even watch back, giving players all the props, or put them on blast. We don't give no hot takes, only talk back. S I C K, S I C K, S I C K, Turn up your volume, your volume, because you're about to listen to the Sick Podcast. With Tony Maradero. 55 seconds left in the penalty, a minute and 27 seconds left in regulation time. Boston 4, Montreal 3. 
Lafleur coming out rather gingerly on the right side. He gives it into the mayor back to Lafleur. Oh! The sickest Montreal Canadiens podcast. <laughs> there is a ball. Sports entertainment like no other. Rejoint, on lui fait perdre la rondelle une passe devant. Et c'est bon. Ce sera la victoire des Canadiens. Stanley pour les Canadiens. Le fac troisième de l'histoire. You found the dogs. John, you found the dogs. He found the dogs. And all together, they worked a young team to the top. And now, a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadians win the Stanley Cup. Brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. Embrace your true nature. And Playground. Your premier gaming destination. It's going to be sick. Marinero, the sick podcast on this Monday, August 21st. How is everyone doing today? I hope you are doing okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we're with you until uh, when I feel like going, getting off, basically, or when Grant McCagg feels like getting off, which hopefully he doesn't get off after like five minutes that we're on. But uh, that's it. You know, uh, let me just. Uh, Put this a little bit more over here. Look at that. That's nice. All right. Okay. It's uh, the sick podcast brought to you in part by Energy Transportation Group, recently named by Deloitte and CIBC as one, of, as one of Canada's best managed companies, the country's leading business award, recognizing innovative and world-class companies. The best managed Canadian companies designation fuels energy's purpose of creating progress for their customers, their employees, and their communities. Join a winning team and check out Energy's career page for available opportunities i would work there uh also uh brought to you in part by playground don't miss out on playground's august million poker series from august 23rd to september 4th with uh one million dollars in guaranteed prize money seven championship ring events and a six hundred thousand dollar guaranteed main event located just over the mercia bridge only minutes from downtown montreal playground and brought to you by these guys and i'm pointing right here uh next to me here uh, La Bitta TV, brewed in Quebec, a winner of a dozen international awards. La Bitta TV offers quality microbrewery beers made with premium ingredients for everyone's taste. La Bitta TV, embrace your true nature. Okay, before we get to our guest tonight, who is going to be Grant McCagg, I'd like to address something from the very top because I was inundated with messages today on my Instagram, in my DMs, uh, on my Facebook, uh, I got emails, I got text messages, I got tweets. I got them pretty much any way you can get them. No, I didn't receive a fax. No, that no. Uh, but earlier this morning, BPM Sports, who I started work with last year, and uh, I was um, doing a daily hit which lasted anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes, Monday to Friday. And I was on at 8.05 a.m. Well, today the station announced that I will be back, year two for me, and I will be working once again Monday to Friday, this time at 12.30 p.m. And I will be a collaborator on... George Larac's show, along with Stefan Gonzalez. And I'm very much looking forward to that, and I'm very excited about it. But after that announcement, I got inundated with messages from people saying, is that it for the sick podcast? And I'm not so sure that people understand. After I walked away from 19 and a half years of radio, it was to go forward with the sick podcast and to do it on a full-time basis and to do it with absolutely no restrictions and no one to answer to whatsoever. And uh, I found in BPM Sports and in Tivia Sports um, a radio station and a television station uh, that wanted to bring me on and give me some work and appreciate my work, and I enjoyed doing it, and I'm happy to be back, and I'll be back on TVA Sports as well. Uh, at the very least, Monday to Thursday, like I was last year at 5.30 p.m., and who knows, maybe even Monday to Friday. But once again, it's just to clear up that 
I, uh, I love the work. I appreciate the work. I love doing it. Uh, I have very, very much enjoyed a new listenership and a, view, a new viewership, uh, some of whom didn't uh, watch me or listen to me before, some of whom didn't even know who I was. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. It's very stimulating. It's a challenge for me to do it in my second language, maybe even my third, because I spoke more Italian growing up than I did French. But um, the sick podcast is not going anywhere, folks. Uh, this is my full-time job. This is it. And uh, the others are also uh, jobs that I take very, very seriously. And I'm going to approach them with a lot of professionalism. And I'm going to have a lot of fun. And, um, you know, as long as they remain fun uh, and they'd like to have me back, I'll keep on doing it. Avec énormément de plaisir. Non, je les remercie beaucoup. Uh, les patrons de BPM Sport pour leur confiance. Je les remercie beaucoup, les auditeurs, pour leur support. Je suis très content d'être de retour pour ma deuxième année. Uh, je les remercie Jean-Charles Lajoie. Um, j'ai fait uh, à qui, um, avec qui j'ai collaboré l'année passée à la radio. Ça a été très plaisant. Puis j'en suis convaincu que ça va être autant plaisant avec Georges Larac puis Stéphane Gonzalez cette année à la radio. And uh, j'ai hâte de collaborer avec Jean-Charles à la télé, à TVA Sport. Donc merci tout le monde. Merci beaucoup. Merci BPM Sport. Merci TVA Sport. But the sick podcast is here. And it's here to stay. And I'm here to stay. I think and I hope for a long time. All right. Thank you very much. Without further ado, let's get to Grant McCagg of recruits and recruits.ca and the sick recruit draft cast. <laughs> Shane Gaumont. Yeah. Can we, uh, can we bring up Shane? Uh, because I know Shane is at master control and has been since last week because Agnello and Sammy and Juliana are at an SMA uh, conference uh, in BC, as a matter of fact, but I'm, you know, Shane, can we, can you, can we bring you up here? There we go. Of course we can. <laughs> Yellow and Sammy. Hey, look, he actually looks very. Why? Where'd you go? Hold on a second. Come back here. Hey, hey. Tony, I got a show to produce. Eh? <laughs> Found your cap. Eh? I know. Good. You, could, you could do both at the same time, right? <laughs> I did it today. I and produced look, yeah. the grant that I show. Yeah. Yeah. And look how happy he is to be on, too. What a change from in yellow. When I go to in yellow, it's like, oh, no, don't tell me you put me on camera type of thing. But here we go. All right, hey, okay, man. Man Thanks of many, this. many talents. A man of many, many talents. Oh, he's like gone. You. I was going to ask him if he uh, wrote that, wrote the theme song there too, or yeah, riding the, on a slate the, of emotions. The, the 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 theme song has a, a lot of opinions. I have to tell you, but I, you know, I will say this: um, <laughs> like it, love it, or hate it, it grows on people. Tony, and, I I find myself, and I and it bothers me. Because when I think, oh, you're going to be on the sick podcast tonight, I'm like, S I C K on the run. I just, it runs through my head. And, and that's kind of like the carpenters, you know, like uh, it just, it, it's there. You don't want it to be there, but it is like, it's catchy. That's, I'll, I'll that's, give you that. that's, uh, that's marketing. All right. That's marketing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, look, we, we have you on. Uh, and, uh, and I reached out and I said, uh, so what do we have for topics here? And you said, well, did you see my Rhinebacker video? And I said, hold on a second. And then I <laughs> went to look at it, and I saw it. So uh, he played this weekend, on the weekend? Uh, it was the last 15th? week. I think Last the week on the 15th, yeah. Yeah. And uh, um, he was on for both goals against. He didn't get any points. So if you just looked at the score sheet or whatever, you'd think, oh, he, you know. Probably wasn't very good, but I had a look at the game, and I think you can you can see by those clips uh, that uh, he's a confident young man. It's I mean, for an eighteen year old playing in a men's league, uh, I mean, there's a disclaimer there. It's uh, just like with Michkov last week when I was saying it's three on three mini tournament or whatever. This is preseason Swiss league, so it wasn't uh, as a couple people commented. You know it. Uh, is there much contact? It, no, not not certainly in preseason in the Swiss League, but... Uh, <laughs> There's not a lot of contact in my house either. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> but, they, uh, yeah. but they 
skate. They're good skaters, and he uh, he wheels around people. Like he's got good wheels and really protects the puck uh, very well. But what I like more than anything is just he's his confidence and poise are through the roof. Like to to do some of the things he does with the puck in a, in the Swiss League at his age is it's very encouraging. I think. I think we're only just, uh, he's only just scratching the surface with his offensive uh, ability because he does like to join the offense. And I think uh, uh, some people might have been underrating just how much offensive upside the kid has. So, you know, I'm glad to have you on tonight because I read somewhere on Twitter from someone who actually took a look at the game too and had the video and uploaded it. And they said, not a great game for Ryan Backer. Played first pairing, yes, but his minutes went down from a year ago and uh, struggled at times. And there was a lot of reaction on the internet because of it. Oh, no, they got this one wrong. Bust, this, that. And by the way, folks, even though I would have loved an offensive player because I'm an offensive kind of guy, I think, I, you know, everything I do, is on the attack, so I've always liked attack-minded everything. <laughs> Folks, don't judge. Even if Ryan Backer would have played a bad game, I mean, don't crucify a kid on one bad game. I mean, no. that's, you know, like... And I don't agree with it that he had a bad game. I mean, he was on the ice for both goals against, but one definitely had, had little to do with him. And the other one, he tried to pass it over to a, a teammate, and it, it kind of... Uh, it was in the offensive zone and it sort of flubbed off his stick and they came down and eventually scored. But besides that, he pretty much error free. Uh, I mean, I watched every shift and I got clips. I put up a video on, on recruits of the whole, yeah. of every notable, every notable clip, both good and bad. Uh, the, the video that I put up on Twitter was just his, him with the puck yeah. uh, showing his offense just, uh, you know, I, I mean, there, there's just so much negativity with uh, with our draft picks before they even play. And and it, I, I like to try to focus and put the onus on the positive. You know, there's a lot of positive there. And um, I I just I'm, I'm really impressed with this puck game. And I think uh, we might see him put up uh, really good point totals as a. 18, 19 year old in the Swiss league this year. So you said something that I thought stood out to me when you said there's so much negativity around the Montreal Canadians prospects and draft picks. And I find that you're right. And I also find that there's so much positivity around the Montreal Canadians prospects and draft picks. It's mm -hmm. either people think they have the best prospect pool in the National Hockey League, and every player is going to pan out to be a very solid NHLer. Or people think that they're flops and that they screwed up. I like I, it's hard to find like somewhere in between. And look, I saw something earlier today, uh, Shane. I don't know if you have it, but I think it was the Canadians' draft picks or their prospect pool in 2020 or something like that. You know, I'm saying, Shane, I don't even know if you have it. I don't even know if I sent it to him, to tell you the truth. But if I didn't, it was it was their prospect pool in, like, 2020, and, and Caulfield was on it. But there were other players that everyone was saying, wow, look at this prospect pool. I don't know if I have it here. Hold on a second. I'm, I'm trying I to remember. Norlander was pretty high, I would imagine, at the time. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Cole Caulfield. Um. So this was, somebody tweeted this, okay? Big Head of Hockey tweeted this. Montreal Canadiens' number two ranked prospect pool from 2020 via another app, uh, you know, another publication, okay? Let's put it at that. Uh, <laughs> number one, which was not yours. Number one, Cole, I, I, I kind of feel particular to start talking about other publications if I get you on. So it's another publication It's not yours. It's well known. Number one, Cole Caulfield. Number two, Jordan Harris. Number three, Alexander Romanov. Number four, Jaden Struble. Number five, Ryan Paley. Number six, Caden Primo. Number seven, Matthias Norlander. Number eight, Jesse Yalone. And number nine, Josh Brook. And number 10, Cam Hillis. Now, <laughs> now, you know, I'm happy I saw this because 
it just goes to show you how things can change fast in hockey. Yeah. And it goes to show you that, you know, not every prospect will pan out the way you think that they're going to pan out. It also goes to show you just how hard the art of drafting is. It's very, very, very hard for every pick to actually pan out to be, you know, a solid NHL player. Some of them will never be. Some of them will be AHLers. Some of them will play somewhere else in another league. Some of them might, you know, might end up calling it quits in a couple of years. That's just the way it is. Oh, for sure. And uh, it just, it goes to show just how, like there's only 23 roster spots, right? Yeah. Not, not every, like if you draft 20 guys in the top two rounds over a decade, uh, just the numbers tell you that not every one of them is going to make it. There's got to be at least five that, that don't end up making it for whatever reasons, because you just, uh, it, it, you know, your team's not f- completely full of rookies every year. There's veterans that obviously aren't going to lose jobs. Like Nick Suzuki's not going to lose uh, a spot over the next decade or F- Caulfield or Doc. No. So every first and second round pick uh, is not going to make it. Uh, and yeah, I, I like looking back at those. If I ever get big headed, Tony, I just look back at a list of, uh, top prospects that I would have had three, four years ago and say, Oh, okay. What do I know? This, you know, it just, it, it changes completely. So uh, when people try to project, say, well, th- we we're really strong on defense or this or that things change. You guys get traded. Guys don't pan out like you expect. Some guys uh, end up uh, like a jack eye comes out of nowhere and beats out uh, like you, who would, who, you didn't know three years ago that Arbor Jackai would, would appear on no. the scene and be better than Struvel, Harris, Norlinder, and all those defensemen that were uh, Josh Brook that were all listed in there. Uh, injuries, like you said, Josh Brook blew out his knee and, and that pretty well ended his, his go. Uh, just like Noah Juleson a few years back when he was the number one rated prospect. And then, yeah, you know, uh, the, the orbital fracture and, and, and stuff like that. And he just never was the same player. So it, 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 it's one of the fun parts of it is that you just, it, it's so unpredictable. No, it is. And, and look, a lot of people who say I would have taken this guy over that guy and this guy over that guy are, are also people that probably never saw these players play. And they'll just look at, you know, a couple of videos or they'll just read a couple of reports from a couple of different people and uh and decide to do that and that's and that's fine and that's okay i'm going to tell you this uh and and i want to bring back uh shane Uh, bring him back up here for a second shane come back to us you disappear too fast (laughs) shane are you there going once going twice he's here look what a beautiful cap that is i don't know i have about uh, two or three of those caps at home and it always seems like i always take one bring in the truck take the other one bring it in the other truck take this take that and everything i I can't find it all right okay um (laughs) Are we able to bring up any of the Ryan Backer clips or because of copyright, we can't bring up anything? Oh, we, can. We, bring up? we can. Oh, we yeah. can? Yeah. Swiss yeah. League's fine. All right. Okay, good. So bring them up then. You want me to take myself out? Uh, you can. I'd like to, You can keep yourself on. This is, uh, yeah, yeah. Why not? All right. Okay. Look at the little spinorama here. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, you know Sorry, what? That's- in the offensive zone, where if you get picked and the puck goes the other way, to try and pull that one off, pretty good. Yeah. Look at this little dish here. Ding. Like, he's pretty heady. He's, you he's know what I like? Yeah, from what I'm seeing, he's always in movement, eh? Yeah. I he's, like this one. Just wheels around everybody. He got around three players like they weren't even there. Well, you yeah. know, the third backed off a little bit, but. Right. So I'll tell right. you this. I'll tell you this. Um, I don't know if we saw him tired at the combine in Montreal or whatever. He uh, he moves. I'm seeing him move better than I did when he was here at the combine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, well, don't he, you find he's more smooth and more fluid based yeah. on these videos? And Rob Ramage, you know, was telling me like he hadn't been on ice for a, a month, as you know, and he. Uh, I mean, you're doing nothing but interviews and flying all over the place for a month there, just steady, and then get on the ice and expect them just to fly around. You know, it uh, 
it, the, he, he, he is moving a way, way better in this that I think than he, than he did there. And I thought he looked fine in the camp. So it's very encouraging. But you know, you know, based on what I said and, and the camp, there was no hitting at the camp. Right. But I, I'm, I, I wonder about his physicality. We know that he's a pretty big boy. We know yeah. that he'll get bigger. We know that he'll get stronger. We know that he doesn't necessarily have to be overly physical because one of the things that we did see is he uses his, his stick very well uh, to intercept pucks and to, to, to cut off uh, passing lanes and to tie up other players with, with their stick, with his stick, or either put the stick between their legs or whatever. I'm curious to see, though, his physicality. You watch the entire game. Is that an element of his game that's missing, or how is it? He, um, well, again, he's an 18-year-old playing in a men's league, so you're not uh, you're not expecting him to be physical. No, um, he um, he's got to get he's got to gain some upper body strength, and I think once that comes, then you'll see more more of a physical edge to him. But he he's uh, he's very he's aggressive defending. Now, physical, uh, aggressive, they can not necessarily synonymous with each other. But uh, I think as he, get, as he gains strength, you'll see more and more physicality out of him because uh, he's just uh, he, he's playing out of his league when it comes mm -hmm. to physical maturity. So I, I don't think that he's soft in any regard. Like if that's what you're leaning towards, like is he soft? Yeah. No, not at all. Uh, Neil Max says the NHL combine measured him at five eleven with sneakers on. I don't know about that. Grant and I were in uh, the press room. Uh, no, the they measured in Bell no. and and six he's two over, and a quarter. Oh yeah, I, I think, no, no, no. He's he's well over yeah. six feet. The no, guy no, was he measured next to him. at the I combine. Think, measured six two and a quarter. I think Neil is talking about Ryan Leonard. Ah, uh, he's probably talking about. Okay, he's talking about. Yeah, just Ryan Leonard is. Neil. Oh, that's Leonard. Yes, Neil Mack just said that's Leonard. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Ryan Leonard. Leonard. Yeah. Le okay. Yeah, yeah. That's Leonard is under six feet. I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> yeah. Ryan Backer. Ryan Backer is is over six foot two. Yes, he's and uh, and yeah. uh, is he's not he hasn't finished growing yet, eh? No, the growth plates are still open. Uh, something that I'd never heard of before. Uh, Lane Hutz. Hudson came along, but apparently if your growth plates are still open, uh, there's still growth to, to come. Yeah. And the fact that he, the fact that he's uh, getting flare ups with that Osgood Schlatter. Yeah. Also tells you that it's because he's still growing. So um, no, I, I'm not, uh, he's not going to be Arbor Jack eye out there, but he doesn't have to be. He's no. going to be Reinbacher and he's going to be, uh, an excellent defender, and I think he's going to provide a lot of offense too. So, the C Canadian fans, I think, should be pretty, uh, pretty optimistic about the future with him. Now, once again, you don't have to be a physical defenseman either, right? There's a lot of defensemen that don't have that element to their game that are very fine, good NHL well, defensemen. Was Serge Savard a physical defenseman? Like, uh, no, not really. I, I'm not sorry. Really. I'm asking the wrong. I'm asking young lads, so you wouldn't be. Well, able to answer you know, that, I, but... I saw a lot of clips of Savard and Lapointe, and, yeah. and and Robinson was obviously the most physical of the three. You know, and, uh, and Lapointe was was also physical, but Savard didn't play. You know, a beastly game. He he used his he used his uh, his length and his smarts to defend as well as anybody in the NHL. So, yeah, he's. He's not Chris Pro Ryan Bacher's not be Chris Pronger. He's not going to be Larry Robinson, but that doesn't uh, that doesn't mean that he he can't be an excellent defenseman. So you know, you talked about the Osgood Schlatter. Uh, you know, based on the the images, based on the video clips that we saw there, that montage that you put together, uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't look like uh, there's mobility issues there. Far from it. It looks like no. he's uh, moving around like he's uh, he's uh, he's playing pond hockey. Yeah, you see him hop over the stick there at one point two in front of the net. He's, uh, I mean, it might flare up just from that, you know, <laughs> use again. But you, you'd think if it was really bothering him and it was going to be an issue this uh, year that he wouldn't be playing in preseason games, and he hasn't missed any. Any, so I think that's uh, that that bodes well that uh, it's not something that we should be too concerned about. 
How many minutes did he play in that game on August 15th, Grant? Do you have that by chance, sir? Actually, no. Uh, Instat didn't post uh, how many minutes he played. Okay. But it was – he played lots. Okay. And, I mean, again, it's preseason and – to 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 say oh well he didn't he played less as the game went on well <laughs> it i it i wouldn't put any put any stock in that whatsoever it doesn't matter he's a first pairing guy you know what 18 I'm gonna, years of age i'm so. going to tell you something i'm happy that he's playing in switzerland because this pick uh there is a lot of people that aren't happy about it uh because of everything <laughs> that matter. we heard about the, you know no but it would be really unnecessary pressure on him. Uh, it was it was a top five pick. It was number five. It's not like it was number twenty five. So at number five, the expectations are higher, right? Number five, then number three, the expectations are even higher. Number one, and if he would have been playing here close to home, he would have had everyone watching him. And if he would have had a bad game or he would have had a bad shift, he would have got absolutely obliterated. And you know what? I know what the beauty of Instat, and I know what the beauty of the internet, and I know what the beauty of streaming, that people are going to be able to get glimpses and images and here and there and whatever and some of his highlights, but it's not the same. Because if he would have been playing in Laval, for example, and he wouldn't play well, the front page of the paper probably would have said uh, the Canadian's number one pick is a flop. Like, it, it's possible that they could have said that in their headline. It well, sells papers, obviously, right? It's better that he's... Well, nobody... Nobody ever overreacted to caught Kiami, did they, Tony? It's Montreal, <laughs> man. Everyone wants everyone overreacts to everything, you know. Everyone yeah. overreacts to everything. He never got criticized, did he? Uh, I'm sure he did. Yes, oh, but at okay. the same time, like I said before, <laughs> you know, a lot of these kids too, though they have their tires pumped pretty good, you know, like oh, yeah. and, and so. Well, um, yeah. Well, I, I think it's fair to say that there's been more criticism than bouquets throw it at him so far yeah but uh and I, I i don't agree that everybody you know there's there's lots of level-headed have fans that aren't, aren't you know or aren't overreacting or uh either way positively or negatively and i i like to i hope that we're three of them but anyway that's up for so debate, so I you know what i'll tell you this <laughs> max lapierre um and and i do some work with him over at tva sports uh, Max Lapierre, of course, of La Poche Bleu. Uh, Max played four years in Switzerland, or three and a half, in uh, in Lu for Lugano, as a matter of fact. And so he's got <laughs> contacts in Switzerland. And when the Canadians drafted Rhinebacker, uh, Max Lapierre was one pretty happy guy and said that the Canadians now have their Petrangelo. That's a mm. big statement. That's a very, very big statement, right? Alex Petrangelo, we saw him this past year, the playoffs with the Vegas Golden Knights leading them. You know, a big factor in their cup win was also a big factor in St. Louis's cup win. Has two cups under his belt. He's a big, big boy. He's a horse. He can play close to 30 minutes per game. And he said that based on his context, the Canadians now have their Petrangelo. It's a pretty big statement. Yeah, I think that that's jumping the gun a bit, of course, but I've compared him to Savard, so I guess <laughs> you know it's uh, it, yeah. There's there, I've I've seen that name thrown out uh, in the same conversation, and there's some similarities there. I don't think he's got uh, Pietrangelo's uh, point shot um, yet. Anyway, uh, well, again, uh, let's. Uh, I'm sure if he was playing junior, Tony, he'd be physical. I hear you. You know? Yeah, no, I no, mean, I know. He's he just, playing with guys seven years older than him. Well, yeah. You know? How many really physical soccer players are playing Premier League at 18 years of age? It, it, like, it's... It, you got to grow. You got to mature. And it, it, it'll come. He's certainly not soft in any regard. That That's not something... That's not a topic that I'd like to see to start getting... Yeah, bandied around because it's it's not. Uh, I don't think it's justified. Shane, if you want to jump in there, don't be shy. Like you're looking at me like the Statue of Liberty. Like this is this is your and partner you in crime here. This you is your partner in crime. This is from the sick recruits draft cast. You and him should be going at it here, and I, I should be sitting back after 20 years in the biz. I should have my feet up. I should be enjoying the show. 
This is your <laughs> show, Tony. No, no, this is, <laughs> this is your show. No, this you know, is. I, I love this Brent. show. This show belongs to everyone listening and everyone watching. It's their show. It's not my show. It's their show. Yeah. Well, uh, Shane knows knows better to bite the hand that feeds him. I mean, come on now. He's Ooh. he's not gonna. <laughs> no, Shane. Shane I, I think I think that Shane is a little bit scared of you, Grant, because he knows <laughs> you don't have a very high opinion of people named Shane. <laughs> oh, okay, I get it. I get it. Mine's spelled differently, though. If that that changes anything. But, ah, yours is spelled oh, like Shane Corson. Yeah, I got I got a Y in there. Okay, uh, you got, got a, a Y in there. Okay, like Mr. all right. Corson, like Mr. All right, Corson. okay. I I would take Shane Corson on my team yeah. any day of the week. Yeah, 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 for but sure. You know what? Jumping on to what you guys were saying, the one thing that stood out to me is that everybody uh -huh. that's played with or against Reinbacker has had nothing but praise for him, and you can't say that about every other prospect, right? When you have the opposition saying, "Oh, this guy is the next Petrangelo." It's not even his teammate. He's not biased. He doesn't know the guy. He played against him. So he knows what he's talking about. Like, Maxime Lapierre is no idiot. He played in the, in the NHL for quite some time. Yeah, but let me ask you a question. Just to play devil's advocate, and for no other reason, okay? Just to play devil's advocate. When was the last time a player got drafted, somebody who played with or against them, came out and said, yeah, by the way, I had a chance to play with him or against him. He sucks. Whenever you're ready. Mitchkov. <laughs> I, I did, I, listen, I can't pinpoint and say they didn't okay, say he sucked as a hockey player. They they talked about his his character and his attitude, right? But it's it it, it hasn't been all positive, right? Everything yeah. I've heard from the surroundings of Reinbacker has been nothing but good, right? So like, at one point, you know, you, you sure you take the bias factor in there, but when it's the opposition that goes out on a limb and says this guy's the next Petrangelo. I tend to put a bit of stock on that. Again, okay. that's a that's a high praise, right? That's okay. A so I, I asked you a question. I asked you a question. You said Michkov. Are you ready now? Okay, give me another one. Hold on. Yeah, hold. Yeah, I want to get off before eleven o'clock if I can, please. We're thirty-five minutes into the show. I'll give you twenty-five minutes. Was it two more? There are examples. Just start. No, and I'm gonna no, but I'm gonna tell you, this, Shane. Michkov, I mean, Michkov's got to be an exception to the rule because for whatever reason, there's a campaign to say certain things about the kid, whether they're true or not, and they might be true, and they might not be true, but I'll ask you the question I asked you before, and I'm going to ask you again. Are you ready? I'm going to ask you again. When was the last time someone played with or without or with a player or against a player, with the exception of Michkov, and came out publicly on the record and said something bad about him? Nothing pops into mind. And yeah, nothing pops into mind. All right. Okay. Let's move on to another point now. You ready? <laughs> hey, listen. What can I tell you, Shane? You're a good guy, but that's why you're in that chair. I'm in this chair. Hey, Z, with the bad no, I have, I have, I have <laughs> a show with Grant, okay? I do yeah, have no, no, it's a, and it's a great okay. show. And it's a great <laughs> show. The sick you me on here. <laughs> recruits draft cast. All right. And uh, by the way, it's also on YouTube, and you can subscribe. It's absolutely free, as is yes, this sir. one, and as are all the sick podcast shows, as a matter of fact. We also have one, which is a soccer show, which covers CF Montreal, as well as what's going on in the MLS, notably with Lionel Messi, of course. And that one will go tomorrow live at 1 p.m., all right? So stay tuned en for français. that one. And en français, because now I'm doing podcasts in French as well. Got them in English, got them in French. El prossimo podcast sarà in italiano. Oh, you're going to learn know. Portuguese too, Tony? Falar Portuguese? I, I, I know how to speak Portuguese, and yeah. I understand Portuguese. But if you speak pretty fast to me, I'll have a hard time. But if you speak slowly, I, I get it, all right? Um, I, I I leave for Portugal next week, as a matter of fact. And so the jury is still out whether or not I'll do some shows uh, from Portugal. Uh, but uh, I, I think what we're going to be doing is we're going to be recording a couple this week. And, uh, and so just to be transparent with everyone. So I will be going on vacation. I'm going to record some podcasts hopefully that's the plan and uh and uh we'll um we'll play them while i'm in portugal or else i'll be recording some while i'm in portugal 
and we'll be playing them there. You'll know because I won't have the same background when I'll be in Portugal if I'm recording them there. All right, okay. A shout-out to Murphy Clinic, an aesthetic clinic specializing in medical aesthetic care. They offer permanent laser hair removal as well as a wide range of treatments for skin problems such as acne, rosacea, fine lines, and more. They currently have two clinics, one located in Montreal, Shop Angus, and the second on the North Shore in Terban. They're also opening soon in Quebec City. Visit murphyclinic.ca or on Instagram at Murphy Clinic. A shout-out also to Charlie, Stan, Sam, and everyone over at Optimal Stretch Clinic, 4710 St. Ambroise. Whether it's fascial stretch therapy, whether it's a deep tissue sports massage, whether it's a cupping, acupuncture, osteo, physio, you name it, uh, they're in Point St. Charles. Check them out on Instagram at Optimal Stretch Clinic. Hey, Grant, I don't know if you saw this, but you uh, sent out a tweet the other day about Matthias Norlander. Did you see? Do we have it by any chance, uh, Shane? The tweet that Grant sent out about Norlander? I don't think we, I have Grant's We don't tweet. have it? Okay, so we don't have, have Grant's tweet. Grant. Grant, did you see how many views your tweet got? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay, so go ahead and repeat what you tweeted, and then I'll tell you how many views you got. You want me to remember what I tweeted? No, you just you basically, <laughs> you basically said that Matthias Norlander <laughs> yeah. will be playing hockey in Sweden this year, correct? Yeah, because he played an exhibition game. I noticed the other day I was looking at box scores, and I'm a bit of a junkie there, Tony. I look at sweet in the middle of the summer. I look at Swedish hockey league box scores. Yeah. Okay. You got a, over a hundred and thirty-five thousand views. Oh. Okay. That's pretty good. You well, see- there was some attri- attributed by RDS and a few other places, you know. Yeah. And they, they always refer to me as former NHL scout. Like it makes it sound like I don't scout anymore, which you know. No, no, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, like recruits not good enough. Yeah, never mind Got recruits. It. I'm I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a hold of everyone. I'm gonna say he's now Grant McCag of the Sick Podcast and the That's Sick right. Recruits Draft Cast. Exactly. That's who okay. I am now. So it, it's We're living in the now. It's interesting you say this, okay? And mm. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, I don't know the exact rules, but I'll try and find out. If you play an exhibition game, are you not allowed to come over? I I have sources telling me that he's not. Uh, yeah, that 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 he's not coming back, and that uh, he will. Uh, I mean that they've got Struble, Mayu, probably Baron. Um, uh, Trudeau, the like they don't. Those are the guys they want to develop, and and Norlander yeah. isn't part of the plan. I think it, it was shown that he's just not going to adapt to the any to the North American ranks like they had hoped. Yeah. Uh, so why lose a why lose ice time for a kid that you want to develop that you have higher on your uh, draft chart? than Norlander when you know that you're very good chance that you're not resigning him at the end of the year. So back back to uh, Sweden. I mean, if he explodes and leads the Swedish league in scoring, yeah. and goes to the world championships and wins MVP, they'll revisit it, I'm sure. But So, so uh, yeah. So I'm going to tell you this. The second that you tweeted it, I knew that you tweeted it not only because you saw him on a score sheet of an exhibition game, but I knew that somebody – you had it on good information. Like, yeah. I, I've, I've come to know you now, and I know that you're not tweeting things just for the sake of tweeting them. Somebody's whispering in your ear, all right? Now, having said that, I don't know if you had a chance to see what was on Twitter today, but um, uh, Norlander's agent responded. Did you see that? No. All right. Okay, so let's let's bring up what we have, Shane. I want to show you something. All right. Uh, no, it looks like there will be no return to the SHL for Matthias Norlander. All right. And uh, look at that at the bottom. Arbara bullshit. <laughs> All right. So uh, the, the basically they're saying the report uh, that uh, that uh, he will uh, be playing in uh, the SHL, the Swedish uh, uh, elite league is uh, is uh, Swedish hockey league is not true. 
They're saying it's not founded. Okay. Oh, okay. It's in it's in the uh, hockey news version of uh, of the Sweden's newspapers. And uh, here's another article. Let me just see here. Um, okay. So La Rumeur, it's not a rumor. It was it was a report, but La Rumeur voulant que Mathias Norlander ne revienne pas en Amérique du Nord pour écouler sa dernière année de contrat avec les Canadiens de Montréal est fausse. So the rumor stating that Mathias Norlander, who will not be that he won't be back in North America uh, for the final year of his contract with the Canadians, is false. Elle a été démentie lundi par l'agent du jeune défenseur Class Elefoc de l'agence CAA. So it was denied earlier today by um, Norlander's agent, Class Elefoc of CAA. Mathias et moi ne savons pas d'où vient cette fausse rumeur. Mathias and I don't know where this false rumor is coming from. Uh, was indicated by email to TVA Sports to Nicola Cloutier, who's also been a collaborator on the sick podcast before, by the way. Mathieu a très hâte de se joindre aux Canadiens au prochain camp d'entraînement. Il compte prendre l'avion début septembre. Mathias is looking forward to being at the Montreal Canadiens camp. He will be on the plane in early September. So this is this is interesting here, and I didn't bring it up to say, Grant, what you're saying is 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 wrong because I once again I'll, I'll state this. I don't think he's in their plans, so I totally understand that logic, and I'll agree with you that they probably want to uh, give more time to other players now. Um, he hasn't adapted up until this point. I don't think he's in the plans, and I know that somebody whispered in your ear because I know you, so I know someone did. But what I find interesting, and this is why I brought it up, is because there seems to be some miscommunication here somewhere where the agent and the player are under a certain impression, they might be right, or someone in the Canadians organization is under a certain impression, and he might be right or he might be wrong. But basically, things are not crystal clear here, or at least no. not for some. No, and I don't know all the rules and regulations, but I did, I did presume when he was uh, playing in the SHL that that's where he. <laughs> you don't normally play uh, exhibition games in the SHL and then, and and then not play in yeah. the SHL. Yeah. So I asked about that, and I was told uh, that you are allowed. This right. is what I was told, but I said and I responded. Yeah, but that's very weird. Yeah. How many people do you know are going to play in the National Hockey League or show up to an NHL camp and will start playing an exhibition game in the Swedish Hockey League? It's weird yeah. to me. Very yeah. weird. And uh, showing up at camp doesn't mean he's going to stay either, right? Like the Canadians may just say, well, uh, it's in your best interest that you go back and play in Sweden, we think. And so, uh, like, the, the agent isn't saying, I don't think, that the guarantee that he'll play. I don't know. Like, anyways, uh, the information I got, uh, it, it could, it, it, maybe it's wrong, but I certainly was told that, I, like, uh, don't be expecting him to resign, like I said in my tweet. You know, don't be expecting him to resign with the Canadians, and uh, I expect him to play in Sweden. But it wouldn't be the first time that 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 information that I've got didn't turn out to be correct. But uh, it sure sounded like uh, that way to me. And uh, if it if it ends up being different, then then uh, my apologies for uh, for having misinformation. But uh, anyways, that's that's interesting that 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 came up. But uh, I. I mean, I'd prefer him to come over. I'd prefer him to be here and have one. He's got one year left. So I just found it strange that he's playing. What's he doing playing exhibition games in Sweden? What if he gets hurt? What's the insurance? What's the liability on that? Like, it doesn't make sense to me, Grant. It doesn't make sense to me. To me, if he's playing an exhibition game in Sweden, I, I don't understand. I don't know of any other Montreal Canadiens prospect. Yeah. Like, it's like Slavkovsky is going to be playing exhibition games in Slovakia. Right. I don't, I can't recall the last one that did it. Uh, fine. If, if that's the, if that's the plan, then 
okay, then uh, then the information's wrong. But uh, anyway, that that's fine. So um, so what happened to him? Because uh, many were high on him when he was drafted. Um, I think you were high on him when he was drafted as well. I know you said he didn't he didn't adapt to the ice, but um, is, is there anything else that you see other than that? I know it's a big, that's a pretty significant thing. I know I get it. Well, he's not overly big. He's not physical and he's not a great skater. Um, the thought was that perhaps like he's got very good puck skills and a good shot. So the Canadians, as you know, for the past, since Markov and, and PK were around have, have needed power play, power play uh, point men. And the, the thought three years ago was that that was he was the guy that was going to fill that slot eventually if 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 his defensive game could adapt well enough at the North America level to play even strength that he would be on the power play. But he came over to the AHL and he wasn't even on the uh, Xavier Willett was on the top power play and uh, yeah. <laughs> you know uh, he wasn't even on the power play there so. The coaches didn't see, uh, I, I guess, just not having enough time and space, uh, it, you know, with the, with the smaller ice, uh, more physical game in North America. It just wasn't able to make that adaptation. And he's not the first and he won't be the last European defenseman that, that runs into that issue. Now, um, would you characterize that as a flop? Uh, third round pick? No, no. Maybe about twenty percent of uh, third round picks ever play regular in the NHL. So one in five chance that you're getting a you're getting an NHLer? No, certainly not. If he yeah. would have been a top thirty pick, yeah, yeah. Flop. But not when you're picking a guy in the seventies. Certainly not. All right. Okay, Shane, you want to add on to that or? Well, I'm I'm trying to think of the Laval Rockets lineup, right? Where yeah. would he fit? Because he's not making the Habs. Let's let's be honest here. Of course, he's where not. would he fit, right? If we look on the left side here, you know, you got Nicola Baudin, Jaden Struble, another guy that I really liked at rookie camp or development camp, whatever you want to call it, is John Parker Jones. This guy's huge, massive. He bullies people around. He uses his size properly, and he's a good hockey player. I would have him over Norlander. So then he, he's like the ninth defenseman, maybe. Uh, I, I think I think that experiment is over. Um, and I was I was high on him too in the beginning, but it's it's unfortunate. I well, mean Norlander's, I Norlander's, out, right? Norlander's got more talent. Norlander's got more talent than Parker Jones. Let's be honest. I don't know if Parker Jones is gonna play defense either. He sort of kind of bounces. I think he played more wing he's, with Laval last year, yeah, but yeah, he, he he's, plays he's a bit of both. both I think, right, right. right. Like, I I'd yeah. have him on the lineup. I think that guy has great grit. He has like passion. He goes yeah. in the corners. It's like, easier. It's easier to put him in a lineup though when you have twelve forwards and you can put him on a fourth line and you can put him in and out of lineup than it is to put I, him in I, the top I, six yeah. on D. Overall, especially. Think, especially that not all the young defensemen the Canadians have are going to play this year, and some of them are going to end up playing in Laval, right? Yeah. Well, that's right. Yeah. But um, we should just, end, we should end the show on you saying that's right after I said something. It, it would be the well, most appropriate way to end it, but you know what? I'm not going to do that. Go ahead and finish your thought. No. <laughs> Actually, no, Tony. Uh, uh, I have nothing more to say. You, uh, you took wow. the words right out of my mouth. You know what? Uh, nothing more to say, and it's ten fifty-two. But I guess what? We're such great people here. We're going to pay you till eleven o'clock anyway, huh? <laughs> okay. Right. Are we fantastic or what? Hey, uh, thanks for doing this. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks. All right. Okay, uh, Shane. If we can, I was at an event on the weekend, and uh, and I sent you something, yes, and I just wanted to tee it up. Okay. Uh, the event was the second edition. Uh, which was hosted by the creative agency Cartier is Home and their community-driven band La Rue Inspire. And um, a good friend of mine, uh, Karina, uh, who's with Sportira, and it's a great apparel company, and they do apparel for all sports, and they do 
like a bunch of things. Uh, and, um, you know, she told me about it and I dropped by because it's a great community event. And it took place at Lafave Park on Hardy Street in beautiful Villa Sal. And uh, many basketball programs, athletes, coaches took part. Uh, especially kids from leaders of basketball. Female divisions were curated by Heather Alonzo, the founder of Ball Her Way, which promotes and encourages females in basketball. All the 120 player kits I uh, told you about Sportira, the referee jerseys and banners were sponsored by Sportira using local and recycled fabrics. The entire event was free. Uh, there were some key vendors. Athlon Combine was running athletic tests for kids, 365 Hustle also ran fitness challenges, and uh, the kids showed their fitness cards for a free giveaway. So they got T-shirts, they got caps, they got hoodies offered by Cartier, Ball Her Way, and more. There was sneaker cleaning by um, Costa. At Accents was offered all day. They they do customized sneakers too. And uh, all food and drinks were given all day long by local vendors. No vendors were allowed selling anything. Rappers, DJs, so many others came out to make sure the event was a success. And once again, it was the second annual after the 2019 one in Cote de Neige. There was a pause in between due to COVID. But I'd like to, I took some images, I took some video. I'd like to bring it up because it's a great community event. And, you know, when, and once again, I'm showing you the images because... When, um, and I'm not saying this to, to, like, I was the only member of the media that was there. And uh, they, you know, we, we know that uh, uh, media outlets are, um, aren't as, um, aren't as uh, numerous as uh, they have been in previous years. Uh, there aren't as many cameras available. Um, but it seems like uh, media show up, show the other clips. Yeah, here it goes to the basketball. It seems like uh, media show up to a lot of events, uh, but they can't always get to some of these events. And so um, I wanted to do it some justice by uh, by bringing up some clips. I totally understand, by the way, uh, it's summer and a lot of them are on vacation or they had other events to, to tend to, but... Since it was pretty much in my own backyard, a hop, skip, and a jump away, I uh, jumped on the Vespa and made my way down. And I, look, look at this. Look how beautiful it is. You know, we want our kids um, to be active. We want our kids uh, to be leaders. We want our kids to be team players. And you have kids here who are active. They're leaders. They're team players. They're getting out. Uh, they're working out in the community. Uh, by the way, props to the city of LaSalle and whoever was involved as well uh, because they did a total makeup of the basketball courts over the last little while. Look at that. Haircuts for everyone. Huh? Wow. Pretty cool. Great camera work, by the way, Tom. Well. We should we should hire you as a cameraman, too. No, 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 thanks. That would be a, a pay decrease. And uh, no, I'm only in it for six figures. If it's less than six figures, I'm not interested. It's not worth my time. Wasted All right. talent. You're so good. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, you want it? I'm not, I'm not as good as a, a cameraman as you are, clearly. No, no, no. This, this cameraman is, is the sick podcast. A very, very good job. We uh, we pay you in gift certificates. All right. Where? I don't know yet. All Where's right. Yeah. And look at look at this. That, that would be a good one. Uh, and look at this. Uh, there was food, there was drinks, and once again, every everything was free. So it's a great event, and uh, I just wanted to bring some awareness to it. And so just to let you know that the next time you see something about Cartier is home, La Rue Inspire, and all these great people and great sponsors behind it, make your way out to these events, get involved. It was a fantastic event that was had, um, the organization of the event. And I want to thank Karina Name over at... Um, uh, Sportira and Athline uh, for letting me know about it and it was a lot of fun being there. So on that note, thanks everyone for all your attention. I hope you enjoyed the SICK podcast tonight with uh, Shane Gomo here on Master Control and Grant McCaggs from the SICK Recruits Draftcast and of course from Recruits.ca. You can subscribe to his publication and I think for $3.99 per month, 
You have access to absolutely everything, every article, every video, every scouting report, everything, um, player write-ups, uh, draft projections, mock drafts, all that stuff. Uh, you have it uh, on recruits.ca. So if you liked it, like it, share it with your friends, comment sick, S-I-C-K, S-I-C-K, S-I-C-K. And if you go to, uh, if you listen to us on Apple Podcasts, if you can leave us a five-star review, it's our way of feeling the love. I know that all of you watching would want me to do this one more time. One spritz. Two spruits. And why not three? Hair. Go. Arms. Neck and back. I'm out. For Shane Gomo and Master Control, I'm a very... Wet and drippy, Tony Marinero. You're my sick army. You're my sick community. The sick podcast is here for a very long time. Tomorrow night, same time, same place. Thanks for watching. Ciao, everybody. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. Embrace your true nature. And Playground, your premier gaming destination.